is this a C sharp or D flat? Um, it really depends, and I, I want to talk about what it depends on. Uh, this is I, I've had a bunch of students ask me uh, some version of this recently, so I figure it's maybe something that would be of value to to many of you. So, um, is this C sharp or D flat? There's really two main considerations. Uh, one is a vertical consideration, and the other is a horizontal consideration. Vertical has to do with its function in harmony. So if we play this chord and we say that this is G7 flat 5, well then this is D flat because the 5 of G is always going to be some kind of D. The 5 of any kind of G, G, G flat, G sharp, is always going to be some kind of D. And that just has to do with the alphabet that we use in music. So if you just think G, A, B, C, D, uh, that's a fifth. Whether this is G flat or G sharp or G natural, G something, if you go one, two, three, four, five, is always, the five is always going to be D something. So if we say that this chord is G7 flat five, then this is D flat. On the other hand, if we call this G7 sharp 11, well, then it makes sense to call it C sharp because the the 11, um, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the 11 of G, again, G flat, G sharp, G natural, doesn't matter, is always going to be some kind of C just because of the alphabet and counting. So, uh, uh, this note has to be then some kind of C if, if we're calling this G7 sharp 11 um, then it's C sharp that's the sharp 11 so how you name the chord it, it will determine whether we want to call this D flat or C sharp so that's the vertical consideration and, and that would be true if we're talking about fifths like this is G7 sharp 5 that's D sharp, but if we think of this as G7 flat 13, then it's E flat for the same reasons I just explained. Uh, the 13 um, of some kind of G is always going to be some kind of E. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's, there you go, right? Uh, so this is G7 flat 13 is E flat, G7 sharp 5 is D sharp. But then there's the, the horizontal consideration, uh, which could have to do actually with, with two things. One, if, if we're in a key, if we're in the key of, say, A major, and we play this chord, then it's, it's perfectly uh, logical to think of this note not as D flat, but as C sharp, because in the key of A, got C sharp. There's, it wouldn't really make sense to call it D flat when we've already got C sharp uh, native to this key. So there I would say this is A major, this is G7 uh, sharp 11. Just a good rule to, to, to memorize is that when we're talking about stuff that's uh, major scale based, every major scale has every letter name in it just once and only once just once only once you know what I mean? I'm repeating myself here what I meant to say is it every letter name must appear once and only once so that's why we don't say a b d flat d we say A, B, C sharp, D, because we always need in a major scale some kind of A, some kind of B, some kind of C, some kind of D, some kind of E, some kind of F, some kind of G, and some kind of A again. So we're never going to have a major scale that has A and A sharp, or B and B flat. When you get into more exotic scales, 
sometimes that that rule doesn't hold anymore but when we're talking about do re mi major scale stuff that that that's always true so that's another consideration for for all of this but then the, the last thing i wanted to say about uh, the the vertical stuff is that um sometimes you're writing something that's chromatic that that doesn't stay in the do re mi zone and actually So you wanted to write that. We want to write something with the least amount of going back and forth between sharps and flats and something that really conveys the, the logic and the shape of what it is. So since it's generally going down here, flats will make sense. We can go E, that doesn't need any accidentals. E flat is good because then we're going to D. If we call this D sharp, then we would need two accidentals, E, D sharp, D natural. But if we call this E flat, D doesn't need any modification, it's already there. And now we have D flat going to C. We'd have to call it C natural if we're in the key of A because normally we'd have C sharp. So we'd have, oh right, so in that case, E, E flat, D, we just call this C sharp because we're in the key of A. We don't need to, to modify it. And then C natural, which is like the flat version of C sharp. B, no modification needed. B flat, G sharp, because now it's going up, G sharp to A. And you sometimes hear people say, well, the general thing is use flats when you're going down and sharps when you're going up. and and that's true. The reason for that is it avoids redundancy so that you're not naming something uh, sharp and then natural right away or flat and then natural right away. Hopefully, you know, if you just wrote out a few lines like that and tried to work out how you could indicate chromaticism with the least amount of sharping and unsharping and flatting and unflatting, you would uh, generally wind up with that same thing where things going up are generally indicated with sharps and things going down are indicated with flats. Now, when you bring all of this into the real world and you're writing out um, real music and you have to think about the vertical consideration, what's a good way to name this chord so that somebody who sees the name of the chord gets a really quick idea about what it is they're supposed to play or somebody reading this melody, um, you know, you can break the rules if you think that it will, in the end, make something easier to read. Just assume that you're writing something that somebody is going to have to sight read. They're not going to get to spend the whole afternoon uh, looking at it. They're just, you know, they're on a re recording session and they're only going to get one or two tries to play through it. What could you put on the page that is going to be the most uh, bulletproof version of the music. That That's really what it's all about. All of these rules aren't meant to just be dogmatic. They really are, in the end, uh, in the end, meant to be able to convey something in the most direct, accessible way. So if it seems like anything other than that, try to just uh, cast that aside and know that these rules are meant to be reader friendly. So that's the big idea. Do you have any questions about this stuff? Uh, you might, so uh, please uh, comment below here and I'm glad to answer if I can. All right, stay tuned and take good care.